I've learned a lot from being a dispatcher, mainly in the sense that sometimes the most dangerous individuals are the ones who are danger just to themselves. But from my time of being a dispatcher, I can wholeheartedly say that the majority of calls made are regarding people who suffer from some type of mental illness. Some of the worst calls are made from teenagers that are suffering from these mental illnesses. Sometimes, it feels like their whole world is falling apart, and at any moment in time, you're their last hope. Whatever you say impacts them greatly, and sometimes, it's just not enough. The hardest calls for me are the ones where you can't save them. No matter what you say or how much you empathize with them, they're just too far gone already. For confidentiality reasons, all names have been changed. This is one of the odd times where I worked the day shift. This call came shortly after 1 p.m. 911, what's your emergency? Help. I, I need your help, please. A young man stuttered into the phone. Okay, can you tell me where you are and what happened? I need you to stop before I do something stupid. He was crying silently into the phone. What are you planning on doing? I tried to soften my voice. I'm going to kill them, kill them all. Wait, kill? Why would you kill someone? I tried to contact the cell phone provider for more information. They all make fun of me. I I'm not a faggot. I'm so tired of it. They never stop. No one does anything about it. He was sobbing. <laughs> What's your name? You can talk to me. All calls like these were just cries for help. Teenagers who didn't know where to turn. And talking was a 50-50 chance that it would end up great or badly. <laughs> Matthew, what am I supposed to do? He managed to say between sobs. Well, first you have to tell me what happened, okay? I need to know what's going on so I can help you, Matthew. Last week I, I, I was at school and, and Bradley and Con Connor, they thought it'd be funny to, to steal my phone. And what did they do with your phone after they stole it? I had pictures of me, uh, naked pictures, and they posted it on my f Facebook. I deleted it, but everyone's still making fun of me. Oh, well, I can see why you're so upset, but will killing them really be the answer? Why are they allowed to ruin my life, and I can't ruin theirs? That's not fair. Have you talked to any adults about this? Like your teachers or your parents? Dad, the dad doesn't care about me. His stuttering was getting increasingly worse. What about teachers? The cell phone provider finally got back to me with an approximate location. He was at a local high school. They, they all... I, I love the popular kids, not me. He sounded defeated. High school's tough, Matthew. I wasn't a popular kid either. I know what it's like to get bullied. Really? I could hear the sound of relief in his voice. Yeah, and do you want to know how I got through it? I changed schools, and I made a whole bunch of new friends. Uh, nobody wants to be friends with me. They, they all think I'm weird because, it, because of my stutter. Hey, I don't think you're weird. I'm sure when you change schools, there'll be someone else there that doesn't think you're weird either. B but I, I can't change s schools. My dad won't let me. Any previous hope in his voice was now gone. Well, I'm sure when he finds out just how upset you are, he'll change his mind. I heard the faint sound of the school's overhead system. They were conducting a lockdown. <laughs> I'm going to go to jail. <laughs> he started to cry again. No, you won't. You haven't hurt anybody, right? They're trying to make sure you're okay. Th th they're going to think I'm a freak. Listen to me, Matthew. You're not a freak. Where are you right now? I'm in the change room. It's locked, it's so, so no one can get in. Okay, I want you to think about this for a minute. I know there's bullies, and I know they deserve to be hurt, just like how they hurt you. But are you really any better than they are if you do this? He stayed silent for a moment. <laughs> I guess you're right. <laughs> he was crying again. I know it's hard, but you're so much better than that. Better than them. If you do this, you'll have to live with the guilt and... And do you really want that? Do you? 
<laughs> I guess you're right. I, I, I know what I have to do. Matthew, I can make sure you get the help you need, okay? You don't need to do anything. Please, let me help you. My heart was pounding. You don't understand. You do, do you? No, no one... No one does. No one understands. I heard him set the phone down and shuffle around a bit. That's when I heard the sound of something falling to the ground. And then the sound of Matthew gasping for air. I was screaming into the phone, begging him for him to answer. Knowing well enough what he had just done, I sent details to the dispatch and sent an ambulance over right away. Eventually, they found the boy's body hanging from one of the pipes in the boy's locker room. Matthew was a freshman in high school and only 14 at the time. He had a loaded gun in his bag, as well as a suicide note. It turns out Matthew's father was a schizophrenic who would often skip on taking pills, forcing Matthew to have to take care of him. The combination of having an unstable home life and being bullied day in and day out of school, Matthew had had enough. In addition to finding Matthew's body, they found another body in the showers attached to the locker room. The boy had been stabbed in the jugular with a pencil. It was Connor, a senior that had taken joy in bullying Matthew. There's always going to be a part of me that will always believe that I could have said more and that I could have managed just to say something to get through to him. This next one's going to be a long one, so bear with me. I want to start off by saying that I'm a very logical person. I think about the most rational reasons behind things before coming to the conclusion of something unorthodox. But there are times where even I can't explain things that I hear in a call. In my district, people often find their way to the surrounding ghost towns and run into trouble because someone gets hurt or lost or both. Since these towns are not patrolled regularly and have bad cell phone and radio reception a lot of the time, people have spent days stuck in a sinkhole or in a building without a way out. Deep in the bush off a side road near an old ghost town, there's this abandoned prison. Not a lot of people are aware that it's even there until they come across it. This is because the road leading there is so overgrown and well hidden that it doesn't stick out to anyone. The road itself to get to the prison is so dangerous and riddled with sinkholes that people often never make it to the prison before running into a problem. Especially if they go out at night. But no one ever talks about this prison because it was only functional for a few years. It was basically forgotten. It was originally shut down because the ground in which it lay was very unsteady and it has been known to collapse under the trespassers' feet. I was born and raised in this city and I've never even heard of it until a call was made one day. A call that I still can't quite explain. I was asked this question from a fellow Redditor, which is why I'm posting about this call. For confidentiality reasons, all names have been changed. This call came in shortly after 3 a.m. on a Saturday. I was relatively new at my new job and had only been there a few months and was still learning. 911, what's your emergency? Uh, my name is Robert James, and I'm at the abandoned prison in. Please send someone here right now! He was severely panicked and spoke very fast. Okay, Robert, what's the address? I was somewhat skeptical, having never heard of an abandoned prison, and tried my best not to sound annoyed, even though I had a feeling that it may have been a prank. Fuck! I don't fucking know! He was sobbing into the phone now. How the fuck am I supposed to know? I'm not even from around here! The sheer terror in his voice told me all that I needed to know. Robert, you said you were at an abandoned prison in... Right? Did you see any street signs or anything? Was there anything that you can remember? On my screen, the call itself wasn't giving me an address or even a provider. I was on, um, I, I don't know, some road. I, I, I think it's Claymore Street. <laughs> he took a deep breath and continued. I, I saw some gravel on the side of the road. Fuck! So, so I went down the path and saw this fucking place. His breathing was ragged. 
and I sent a dispatch to the road to where Robert was on, with a detail about looking for a gravel path off the side of the road. Okay, Robert, the police are on their way. Can you tell me exactly what happened? Are you alone? No. Uh, well, now I am. He choked out the words. What do you mean? Who were you with? John Witt. I don't know where he went. He, he, he was with me, and now he just isn't. I could hear him walking around and breathing heavy. Can you tell me what happened? Start from the beginning. We heard about this ghost town from a friend and we th th thought it would be a good idea. <gasps> what was that? He stopped and stayed silent, then continued. So, so we made the trip to take some cool photos, you know? Our friend didn't even tell us about this fucking place, but when we found it, we had to... Fuck's sakes! I should have listened when John said this place didn't feel right. He was sobbing again. Okay, so what happened to John? I tried to keep him on track. Uh, that's a good fucking question, dude. I swear to God, he was right fucking behind me. So where are you now? Are you still inside the prison? Um, yeah. But I don't know how to get out of here. It's fucking dark down here and like I just have my phone. <gasps> Did you hear that? <laughs> he stopped, and I listened attentively. I heard the faint sound of banging in the background. Yes, I heard that. Can you find a way out of the prison? The only way you can get in here is through the basement, and I don't want to go back down there. He sounded terrified. Why not? Did something happen? Kind of. I mean, no. But, like, I heard things down there. Like, people or something. I know you're scared, but you're gonna have to go back through the basement, unless there's another way out. <sighs> you're right. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm gonna go there now. <laughs> Fuck this place! Good. Just keep on talking to me. He walked around for a bit, and then stopped. John! John, are you down there? Oh, fuck. oh my god! He was hysterically crying at this point and screaming over the phone. Robert, what happened? Robert, are you okay? I tried my best to contain my own panic as he screamed and cried over the phone. He started to run with his phone down because I could hear the sound of his shoes against the floor. Occasionally he would stop, take a deep breath and mutter something out of my hearing. I tried to yell over the phone and continuously asking what had happened. Eventually, he came to a stop and I could hear the sound of crickets. He was outside. His breathing came back over the phone. I made it! I made it outside! He let out a huge sigh of relief. Robert, that's great. If you can please just try to make your way back to the road, the police should be there any minute. I didn't know how close the police were, and at this point I was just hoping that he could get away from that place. He simply agreed and started to walk. Eventually, as he got deeper down the trail, Sadik would come and go and intercept the sound of his breathing. <laughs> John, I know. The static chopped up his words. Can you repeat it? Robert, I didn't quite catch the- The call ended. The call itself never bothered me until after I discussed it with a fellow co-worker about the abandoned prison that I heard about. We discussed a little about the prison and why it was shut down when she told me it was a hot spot for young photographers. She told me a story about two young men that had gone to the abandoned prison to take photos. They had been reported missing by their family members, seeing as though they never came back from their trip. It was not long after that that the police found the bodies of the two men. One had fallen into a sinkhole in the prison and had broken its neck. He didn't suffer as he died instantaneously. The other man was found alongside the trail, leading to the prison. Signs pointed to a heart attack, and they believed he died of fright. Truthfully, I'm not sure who called me that night. Deep down, I tell myself that it was a prank, but his emotion felt so real. The panic and the terror, it was beyond real. I can't begin to explain, and I'm not sure whether to believe that it was a sick joke or not, but it still sends chills down my spine just to think about it. 
What do you guys think? The forests around here are very thick and dark. There are many trails that go on for hours and are regularly patrolled by park rangers and the like. Many people search for the next greatest trail by making one of their own or going off a main trail within national parks. However, these people are usually the ones that seem to get lost the most. They'll walk around in the dense forest for hours and find themselves not remembering which way they came from or not seeing the familiar tree in which they marked. Although the forests are more dense, there's enough cell phone reception in certain parts that helps these people be able to call when they're lost. Most of the time, when people call, they're found, and the majority of cases, they're still alive. But many people who wander off into the bush and are without cell phone reception often never get found because the missing person report cannot be placed until it's too late. For confidentiality reasons, all names have been changed. This call came in around 2 a.m. on a Sunday. 911, what's your emergency? You need to help me! What the fuck? It was a woman's voice. Ma'am, can you tell me what's happening and where are you calling from? I'm on a shit. I don't know. I took a trail out here and went off of it with my friend. What trail did you take? She, she wanted to go off the trail, so we did. And then we saw something in the bush and we went towards it. Oh my god. She started to cry and I sent out the dispatch. What did you see? You found a dead body. Does it look like it's fresh, or has it been there for a while? Um, I don't know. There's a lot of blood, so maybe it's fresh. Oh, God. Who killed him? No. Don't worry about that. Are you still with your friend? What's your name? The police are on their way. She was there like two seconds ago, my friend Mel. I'm Alex, and Mel told me about this place, and we just wanted to go for a midnight hike. What do I do? I'm so scared. I could hear her breathing rapidly increase as more panic and terror settled in. I know you are. Do you remember how to get back onto the trail? I can't remember which way I was. Where the hell is Mel? Mel, where are you? She was screaming now. Okay. Which way did you turn onto the trail? Was it to the right or the left? Um, I think it was right. Perfect. Did you see anybody else out there with you at all? Like on the trail? I sent more detail to the dispatch. No, it's supposed to be closed at night. We just, we just wanted to have some fun. <laughs> did you hear that? No. I listened, waiting for a sound, but all I could hear was her heavy breathing on the other line. No, I didn't hear that. What did you hear? It sounds like someone's out there walking around. Oh, God. I'm going to die out here. She managed to say in between sobs. Listen, Alex. You're going to be okay. It just might be Mel trying to find her way back to you. She started to scream her name at this point. Mel! Alex, can you hear someone walking around? She stopped screaming, and we both listened. No, I don't think so. When are the police getting here? I don't want to be out here anymore. I could hear her walking through the bush. You're going to have to stay put and wait for a park ranger to get you, okay? The more you walk, the more lost you might get. Okay. Um, what should I do with the body? Please don't touch the body, okay? He was hurt really bad. I think someone killed him. His face is all beaten. Please don't touch him. What was the last thing you remember when you were with Mel? Was she hurt at all? A part of me was just curious as how she didn't see or hear her friend leave. I told her I was going to call the police, but she wanted to go find the trail. I tried to tell her not to go because we walked for a long time and, and I thought she listened, but when I called you and turned around, she just wasn't there anymore. 
and she was crying softly on the other line. Well, maybe she'll find the trail back and be able to point the park rangers in the right direction. I tried to sound reassuring, although part of me wasn't feeling so reassured. You're right. Maybe she's getting help. It's so dark out here. I'm scared. I know, but keep talking to me. They'll find you in no time. I was cut off by the sound of shrieking, running, and then silence. Alex, are you okay? Alex, what happened? Please. She whispered and then the line was cut. After a long three-day search, they found two bodies in the forest, about two miles away from the main trail that Alex and Mel originally took. Unfortunately, only Alex and the dead man's body were actually found. Here's where things get really strange. Alex was not a local resident and had come down to the park alone to do some hiking. While she was there, she met a girl named Mel. Alex had called her family to tell them that she was staying an extra day to go hiking with a new friend that she'd made. Upon further investigation, it was later determined that Mel was the primary suspect for the murder of both the man and Alex. Unfortunately, she has still not been found. Both victims suffered the same markings, one to the back of the head, and went to their faces. 